song which Richie oh, wrote. It's behind us. Yeah. The thing with, with Burn was we toured America and Europe on Burn. We never got to Japan on Burn, unfortunately. Um, well, you know, you can see the footage from live performances of, of the Burn tour, and you can see a young JB covered it. And if you notice back then, he wasn't introducing a lot of songs. He was still finding his feet. Of course, he's the great commandeering frontman of today. But back then, and nobody ever put a gun to my head to introduce songs. It was just a natural thing for me to do that. And like I said, David and I had a great relationship. The, the kind of one jumped to me, I'm a, I'm a bit ambivalent about it. I mean, it was an astonishing occasion. Um, I mean, so many people just, you know, you get out on stage and see that many people. Uh, it's massively intimidating. Um, so I, what I did is I played to the front three rows. I mean, that's all I could do. You know, just say, okay, you guys are my audience tonight. You know, I can't possibly hope to reach the guy what, a quarter of a mile away. You know, it's unbelievable. Um, it was almost ruined by the... Uh, I, and I have to say, this was not Richie's fault. It has been reported that it was Richie's fault, but... Uh, that, that we nearly didn't go on. We had a contract that stated quite specifically in black and white that Deep Purple would go on at sunset because we wanted to be, we, uh, we were offered headline position, we accepted headline position and we wanted to be the first band that would use lights. It was quite simply, uh, uh, we wanted it to be a piece of theatre uh, and that was in our contract. So when they said, oh, we're running strangely early, what, you, can you go on in 15 minutes? Richie looked at his watch, looked at the sun and went, no. Um, they came to the rest of the band and we said, no, no, it's sunset. Uh, Richie took it a slightly step further and locked himself in his caravan. So, uh, so we couldn't go on. And the promoters were actually were ABC television, uh, and it was being filmed by them, and it was all a rather a big deal. And there were 400 and odd thousand people waiting um, until Richie decided that it was actually sunset. But you know, he was right. It was in our contract. Thus, he was stoked when he got on, a little angry. Thus, he played. Really, I mean, he's playing like a demon up there. Uh, but that also, that unfortunate cameraman that got in his way, uh, and that unfortunate camera that got in his way, ended up costing us, I think, $75,000, but uh, which in 1974 was a lot of money. I don't bring California Jam up because it's like my calling card. But he just happened to be in in the mid '70s, the biggest concert event ever. Three to four hundred, uh, two hundred fifty thousand tickets were sold. I think anywhere between three hundred and fifty and four hundred thousand people were there. It was a great moment for the band. Hence, Rich's smashing of the guitar neck in, into the uh, camera and the blowing up of the amps, and some of it was out of tune. You know, and my. Uh, the white suit I was wearing, it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's there for everyone to see. But that was just part of the Deep Purple well-oiled machine. It was a very dangerous stage to be on. We were all fire and brimstone. It, it, you didn't want to be on a Deep Purple stage if you weren't invited. It was like a dangerous place to be. And that was the epitome of what rock music should be. It's not supposed to be polite and yes sir ma'am, thank you, no sir ma'am. It was a big, big, hairy ass, get out of the way. Any member at any moment could do something volatile. And that's what I love about 1974, Deep Purple, 1975. It was dangerous. And that's how it should have always been. I mean, you can't imagine the California Jam now without, A, without Richie destroying the camera with those amazing stabs of the guitar, and B, nearly blowing himself to smithereens. Uh, 
uh, with with the, the, the guitar cabinet um, going up in flames, over um, applied amount of petrol by a rather enthusiastic um, roadie putting far too much kerosene in it. We just ran off stage and got on a helicopter. I mean, it was such a, a high energy thing, and how and you had to be so good uh, for that many people. You wanted to be. And the other bands that were on, I mean, there were some terrific bands on, so we wanted to be as good as we possibly could be. I just remember this immense stress level and wanting to play so well.